welcome back to the kitchen remodel. It's going to be kind of the big video of this section of the year. Uh, if you haven't seen the previous videos, they'll be linked below and they'll be at the end cards at the end of the video. Uh, there will also be a playlist. Yeah, I'll probably make that playlist tonight. Well, what are we doing today? The end of the last video, I was saying I wanted to do this wall, but I could also do this window. I'm going with the window, and there's a reason for that. Bonus footage at the end of the last video about why this wall is so unique, and it's going to be a pain in the butt. bottom plate a window the framing of this window opening this is one of the reasons I love working on old houses you just never know what you're gonna find and it just makes for makes things more interesting so this here this mesh and this plaster is new, uh, which makes me believe that this is not original because it well, it's got well, all these have grounds in them, but there are no grounds in the house. So, someone redid a, a patch here underneath this tile. This mesh is not what is normally used uh, in the 1940s, but the other little thing I found in there that's the electrical. Right there, running underneath the window. So even though this is the bottom part of the framing, the new window can't sit on this. All right, I'm back. Got my, uh, my three foot by three foot window. Um, the rough opening of that window is 35 and a half by 35 and a half. So I'm gonna have to shrink this opening quite a bit once I get this window out. These windows are not easy to get out. Quite the pain in the butt. It would be easier if this countertop wasn't here, but like I said, they're going to be cooking dinner in here tonight. Got to have your safety squints on. Trying to do this without breaking any of this glass. This is plate glass. Now there's nothing standard or routine about this install. If I remember correctly, there are two if not three layers of siding on this house. Uh, different types of siding. What I'm going to try to do is salvage this flashing since the window that's going in is very close to the size of the flashing. I know the width will work, the height, I'm not sure. 
well but I gotta be kind of careful it, it'll pay off in the long run I'll get get this all sealed back up this house is going to be recited eventually so this window will be addressed again in the future so for right now I need to get the window in finish the inside and get it weather tight that's pretty much the goal they're remodeling the inside before they go to the outside you can kind of see what I'm talking about there's the steel siding then there's foam like one inch foam insulation then there's shiplap siding then there is the sheeting then there is the studs Beyonce keeps calling me. Hello. Okay, it's gonna be a tight fit around this flashing. But I think if I did my measurement right, it should go right in. And then we'll work on weatherproofing the outside. First try is a no-go. Why is it a no-go? The flange. Yeah, it's, got, it's a tight, real tight fit around this flashing. It's got to go in low and then come up. Okay, my idea to use the old flashing is not going to work at all. Got to figure out how it's even attached to here. So this has to come off, this has to come off, this has to come off. And this has to come off. I'm going to use some of this great stuff, window and door, get this foamed in. Uh, I got to clean up uh, so that the house looks good for when the homeowners get home. And then I'm going to finish up outside. These things are new. 
Uh, if you want to see me try to use this for the first time, go over to the handyman business and I was using this to fill some holes where there was a bee's nest and a brick wall. Here's the trick. There's green and there's red here. So you got to pull it out to get, get it to flow and then you quick grab it and push it in. It's a horrible design because a lot of times when you are foaming things, you're shoving this straw in there and you're running right down this thing here. It takes hardly any force. Just, just that little tap there, shut it off. I hate it. I, might, I probably should just cut it right off. So keep that in mind when you're using these things. Still makes quite a bit of a mess. So we are all foamed in on the bottom. Now I'll take this outside and foam in around uh, the new framing before before I put the flashing. Well, the, before I put the the sticky stuff on and and the flashing, I'll hit hit it up with this here. I skipped past recording making all this flashing. It came out pretty good. Right now it's just kind of placed in there. I'm going to screw it all in, then cock it all in. Start at the bottom and work your way up so that it's lapped, so that water sheds off of it, just like roof shingles. There's the outside. As I said before, this is just to get them till spring. In springtime, everything's coming off the outside of the house. They're gonna do it in sections at a time. Here's what the foam looks like. It expands out quite a bit. I was, it was coming out hard here and there, and I kept having to kind of wipe it out. But you can see in the crack there, this crack here. This two by four is directly nailed to the two by four that's in the wall there. Now I'm not gonna do any of the wall repairs on this until it gets time to probably finishing out that wall. I'm gonna do it all at one time. I'll also be doing the refrigerator recessed area uh, when I do all the wall finishes. Gotta take out this cabinet of one section of the countertop and get out, get my game plan ready. I'm gonna draw it out on this side and we'll see how it goes. If it just starts crumbling, what I'll probably do is just strip that entire wall of plaster, the lath and the plaster, and uh, then go from there. Probably put new drywall up on this side. <laughs> 